We start off this episode with a squirrel combusting violently while getting the information that it is the hottest day of the summer with 110 degrees Fahrenheit or 43 degrees Celsius. And inside the shack, basically everything is falling apart, even the wallpaper is peeling off. And then we switch to the pines, deciding to just lay around when the radio mentions that the Gravity Falls public pool is opening that day. And so they change the plans and decide to go to the pool. Of course, after peeling off Stan off the floor. And right before they want to leave, Stan already goes outside and the radio mentions another thing that there's a chance for random wildfires. Well, we can hear Stan in the background catching on fire. And when Mabel tells Dipper that he's gonna be fine, apparently she became a ventriloquist because she's not moving a single muscle while saying this. After the intro, we get an overview of the pool where Wendy is clearly visible in the lifeguard seat and on the right side of the pool, we have a new character that is mentioned in a few seconds. When we see the Pines and Sue's entering the pool, Mabel is wearing a swimsuit with a variation of her shooting star sweater. And while walking along the pool, they pass the snack bar. And the guy at the snack bar kind of looks like a blonde version of McGucket's son. At least a little bit. When spotting the stranger I mentioned a few seconds earlier, Mabel instantly falls for him. And Sue says that that guy never leaves the pool for some reason. So she decides to run over to him. And first of all, those lifeguard stands were not in front of the pool storage before. And second of all, I really wish I could be as confident as Mabel if this would happen to me. After Mabel ran away, Wendy makes her presence known by throwing a water balloon at Stan. And they found out that she's on lifeguard duty. And of course, Dipper has to embarrass himself again in front of her by laughing a little bit too long. But shortly after, he gets assigned to the role as assistant lifeguard when she mentions that she's actually doing tryouts for a set position. But before he can actually start with this new duty, he has to meet Mr. Poolcheck, who is Wendy's current boss. And we already saw Mr. Poolcheck in the previous episode. He was one of the guys chasing Dipper while he had that new deep announcer voice. In the next shot, we get another overview of the whole pool. And I'm pretty sure that that down there is Pacifica, at least judging by the hairstyle. We can also see Mabel's shadow creeping up on the stranger, whose name is Mermando. Mm, that probably didn't taste very good. After talking to him a bit, she invites him to hang out, but he tells her that he has a terrible secret, so he can't do it. Meanwhile, Dipper is still trying to become assistant lifeguard, and we also get to see that Poolcheck doesn't seem to know how to actually use nails properly. And he asks Dipper if he has the stuff to actually become a lifeguard, because it's anarchy out there. And when we get the shot of the pool to show how much anarchy is actually going on, Granny, in the middle of the pool, holds up a book titled Pool Jokes, which I suppose is pretty fitting. And throughout the interaction, between Dipper and Poolcheck, we get a taste of how unhinged he actually is when he tells Dipper that he lost a hand to a pool filter. But in the end, Dipper gets the job. And another switch to another subplot, this time Stan in a war against Gideon over the perfect lawn chair. And when Stan tries to throw Gideon off said lawn chair, he gets put in pool jail. Instantly jumping back to Dipper and Wendy, Wendy asks Dipper if he's ready to abuse their powers. And Dipper tells her that he's not sure because Poolcheck looks really emotionally unstable. And when we pan over to Poolcheck, he's hanging off the fence upside down. So yeah, that, that guy definitely has some issues. And there's also a guy running in front of him with green trunks and his expression just makes him look like a zombie. Right after that, we get another scene with Stan, this time from inside the pool jail, where he gets told by his, let's call them cellmates, that the pool jail itself isn't that bad, but solitary definitely is. And yikes, looks like rough conditions in that jail. Back to Mabel's love life, she gets Mermando to tell her his secret, and surprise, he's a merman. 
I know, I know. What a revelation. Though that kind of brings up a question. Earlier he was drinking lemonade and yeah, well, how did he get that drink? He can't really walk to the bar himself. So I guess the only way would be for someone to bring it to him, which seems a bit odd for a poolside snack bar to bring the drinks to the visitors but maybe i've just been visiting the wrong public pools i don't know maybe he just magicked the lemonade to him because he can also just pull a guitar out of nowhere so maybe that's just some more run-of-the-mill gravity falls magic shenanigans after telling Mabel that he's a merman, he also tells her his story, which started by getting captured by a fisherman, whose boat seems definitely 100% safe. He then escaped, but he couldn't get back home. He tried swimming up a waterfall like a salmon, and after getting bashed in the face by a log, he got saved by some deer licking him when he was basically drying out on land. And then he tumbled through a tube into the pool. And when Mabel tells him that she doesn't care that he's a merman and that she doesn't think it's weird, she finally manages to befriend him. Back to Stan's desperate attempts to get the chair back from Gideon. This time he tries blinding him with his watch, but in return he gets blinded himself. And when Gideon puts on his glasses, he says, deal with it. You know, like, like the meme, the meme. Okay, I know it's a lot of jumping around, but we are back to Wendy and Dipper and they start to mess with Zeus by basically using an inflatable duck floaty rubber thingamajig as a ventriloquist puppet and they tell him that the ducks want to be free and that Zeus has to help them. When the pool closes for that day, Mabel and Mermando arrange to meet that night. And when Mabel drives back to the pool, she leaves some traces, mainly a broken pool catcher, but that pool catcher will have significance later on. But for now, she starts to show Mermando some pictures of her and her family uh, with legs, showing that she still doesn't really get the whole him not having any legs part and that that's kind of the problem for him. But besides that, Memendo also misses his family and tells Mabel about his pretty lackluster escape attempt. And at the end of that flashback, Memendo gets attacked by a woodpecker and he's screaming while getting attacked. And that scream, for some reason, they decided to loop it three times instead of the voice actor just screaming differently throughout the scene, while his mouth is also really out of sync. After Memando tells Mabel though that he's happy that he ended up in the pool, because otherwise he wouldn't have met her, she tries to kiss him, but that doesn't really work out. So now we're back to the next day, and Windy and Dipper are still trolling the pool visitors, but now Dipper gets caught by the pool shack and gets scolded for it. And right before that, Wendy told him that they were going to have fun at that job all summer, which he of course was pretty stoked about. Out. So to keep the job, he promises the pool check to catch whoever broke into the pool the night before. He's probably also just very frightened by the maniacal nature of pool check, which I can't really blame him for. So now, Mabel and Mermando hatch the plan to get him out of the pool, which is supposed to take place that night. And when the night arrives, first of all, moon continuity check, which seems to line up with the night before, so props for that. I heard from someone else that not every show gets this right. And of course, after he promised the pool check to, uh, I guess keep the pool in check, Dipper is stationed as night patrol. But not only Mabel is trying to break into the pool, no, Stan is also there and he tells Dipper that he's sleepwalking and then that he's also sleep talking and that he just wants to reserve the lawn chair and maybe destroy some pool supplies later. Dipper of course is especially not amused about the last part and starts to chase Stan when Mabel seizes the opportunity and backs up into the pool area with a golf cart from the shack. And at this point, I finally decided to look into the physical journal to see if there's something about merpeople, anything else. And I only found one page where Mabel wrote into the journal that Mermando said that he apparently has a blowhole somewhere, but she says the less she knows about it, the better. So yeah, I suppose do with that information whatever you want. Mabel starts to lockpick the supply closet 
on the pool property. And yeah, for some reason, Mabel, at 12 years old, knows how to lockpick with a hairpin. Wherever she might have learned it. Probably and most likely from Grunkle Stan. She then proceeds to tell Mermando that she ditched the plan that she made up first to give him legs made out of fish sticks for the plan to just transport him in a cooler filled with water. Of course, Dipper finds her right after Mamando hopped into the cooler and asks her if everybody is breaking in tonight. And well, right behind him, Suze topples over the fence and Dipper tells him to go home again. Mabel then distracts him by shouting, Wendy in a bikini. <laughs> Of course he turns around and looks. He even asks, really, at night? Yeah, Dipper, when he's just standing there in a bikini in the middle of the night. Well, anyway, Mabel drives away with Mermando in the cooler and Dipper chases after her, still intent on catching her and delivering her to pool check. And really, how does Dipper not see Mermando when he's looking over Mabel's shoulder? That seems a bit odd considering he's basically driving just behind them. But anyways, we get a short cutaway back to Stan, who's now laying down on the lawn chair after he just came out of hiding from the women's bathroom, intent on staying there until the morning to rub it into Gideon's face that he got the lawn chair first. Right back to the high-speed chase, Dipper knocks out the plug of the cooler with a water balloon and when they get close to the lake, Mabel hits the brake and they topple over while Mermando, still in the cooler, flies off to the side. Dipper tells her that the jig is up and Mabel starts to spill the beans about everything that just happened and also introduces Mermando, who basically starts suffocating right away. And here I thought about the whole having guilds and needing water thing. I don't really get how that works, because every time he's in the pool, his gills, that are basically located under his ears apparently, aren't submerged in water at all. But there he's not suffocating, but as soon as he's just on dry land in general, he starts to suffocate. Maybe that supposed blowhole of his also can circulate water, but I, I don't want to go into detail about that. So let's just carry on. He's still suffocating. And Mabel suggests that Dipper does reverse CPR. And when he does so, Mabel decides to take a photo of him, which really looks like they're kissing for blackmail purposes. And yeah, he probably could have just poured the water into Mermando's mouth and just let him do the basically breathing. That probably would have worked as well. Which Mermando actually comments on by saying thank you, but telling Dipper that he could have just rolled him into the lake and that would have probably sufficed. And Dipper rightfully hits himself on the head because he didn't think about that. Now Mermando is back in the lake, but he says his voice is hoarse and he's not going to be able to call his family. So Mabel wants to give him the megaphone and this would mean that Dipper would have to give up his job because Poolcheck would know that he lost the megaphone phone and that way he would lose the job. But Mabel convinces him by asking if he doesn't know what it's like to want to do anything for someone you fell for, even though you know it won't work out. And of course, he's referencing Dipper's crush on Wendy. And something that hit me while watching the scene is that Dipper actually took a few hits for Mabel until this point so she can get with guys or she just has things work out for her. He saved her from Norman, nearly got killed by Gideon while telling him that she doesn't want to be with him because she couldn't do it herself. And he let her keep waddles while he let Robbie woo Wendy. And this is not the last time he takes a hit like that, but I just wanted to mention it because I never noticed it while watching before. And yeah, it seems to be a theme that Mabel doesn't really have to deal with any consequences for her actions most of the time. At least not as often as Dipper has to. And now, after saying goodbye and getting a smooch from Mermando, she's also teasing Dipper that it was kinda his first kiss too. And after she does the free willy jump scene thingamajig, they get back to the pool and the overview we get shows that nothing is really out of order, but when we get a close up, pool check is absolutely tweaking and Dipper owns up and the check decides to eat the whistle as a sign of firing him from the job. Could have been done differently, but it's the pool check. And speaking of said pool check, Zeus now gets to feel the full wrath when he helps the ducks escape. While he's saving them, 
He also comes running out of the wrong pool supply side. At least the other side was the one that was already opened. And we saw the pool ducks hanging in a net on that side. And he comes running out of the other. So either they are connected in between or someone got the sides mixed up. And even though I already mentioned that Dipper takes a lot of hits for Mabel, this time he doesn't have to take at least the full-blown hit because he meets Wendy who tells him that she also got fired for taking too many snacks and she decides that they should go break rules somewhere else. And we also get a last little scene with Mabel who gets messages in a bottle from Mermando. Oh, and the resolution to the whole lawn chair debacle is that apparently Gideon put glue on the lawn chair because he expected Stan to break into the pool property. Insane prediction, by the way. And so Stan is now glued to the lawn chair. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Mysteries of Gravity Falls. I gotta say, I really liked watching the episode with the few side stories then intertwining with the main storyline of Mabel meeting Romando and stuff. I think that had a, had a good pacing and a few good jokes. And at least we get a good conclusion for Dibber this time. So yeah, I hope to see you in the next episode. Until then, see ya.